بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم كل سنه وانتم طيبين وان شاء الله هنبتدي مؤتمرنا السابع بتاع بيدياتريك ديبارتمنت مناصر سيتي هوسبيتال في الهيئه العامه للتامين الصحي وتشرفونا النهارده في الفيرتشوال وبكره باذن الله الفيزيكال نتقابل مع بعضينا ويكون لقاء مثمر للجميع ان شاء الله اهلا بيك يا دكتور محمد كل سنه وانت طيب وانت طيب ان شاء الله كل مره ان شاء الله اتفضلي آه يمكن هنبتدي النهارده بالدكتوره هبه الصدفي بروفيسور اوف بيدياتريك اندوكراينولوجي ان شمس يونيفرستي اوف فيري امبورتنت توبيك اي ثينك ات ويل بي فيري نايس تو هير ات اللي هي ادرينال هايبر تنشن ونتمتع بيها ان شاء الله Today's topic will be about adrenal hypertension. <clears throat> First of all, we have to know the, when we can consider a child to be hypertensive. So in children below the age of 13 years, uh, elevated blood pressure is defined as uh, if it's more than the 90th percentile, and stage 1 hypertension if it's more than the 95th percentile, and stage 2 if it's more above the 95th percentile plus 12 millimeters mercury. For children above the age of 13, an elevated blood pressure is considered when the blood pressure is 120 to less than 80 millimeters mercury. Stage 1 hypertension, if the blood pressure is 130 uh, over uh, 80, 9, 80 millimeters mercury, and stage 2, if it's above 140 over 90 millimeters mercury. Now we have to bear in mind that um, the blood, pre uh, blood pressure percentile for children will differ according to the height percentile. So uh, in a 12-year-old male, uh, the uh, 50th percentile for, for blood pressure will differ if he is on the 5th percentile for height. Uh, uh, and in another child who, has, who is at the 95th percentile for height, the blood pressure will be higher, the 50th percentile will be higher, and this also applies to diastolic blood pressure. Now, if uh, we are considering hypertension in children, we have to know that endocrine causes of hypertension will be uh, considered in the differential diagnosis from infancy up to adolescence. So uh, usually, uh, if uh, anyone is uh, working in endocrinology, we, uh, he must have uh, met a child who is referred because of hypertension after exclusion of all other causes of secondary hypertension. So how do, can we proceed in such a child? First of all, we have to know the causes of endocrine hypertension, uh, which include primary aldosteronism, chromocytoma, Cushing syndrome, acromegaly, hyperparathyroidism, Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, both hypo and hyperthyroidism can cause hypertension and renal, uh, renal secreting tumors. Uh, if we look at these causes, we'll find that the endocrine causes are, uh, the adrenal causes uh, form most of the endocrine causes of hypertension. And we, as we all know, uh, the adrenal gland produces two classes of hormones, the catecholamines from the adrenal medulla and the mineralocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. The excess of both hormones or the excessive effect of mineralocorticoids can result in adrenal hypertension. So if we start with the catecholamines, when uh, do we consider few chromocytoma or a paraganglioma in a child? Uh, if the symptoms are paroxysmal and uh, the blood pressure responses to antihypertensive drugs is paradoxical, that is the blood pressure rises instead of drops in response to an antihypertensive drug, um, in cases of resistant hypertension, and if we discover an adrenal mass on radiography, uh, if the child has a previous history of a paraganglioma or a pheochromocytoma, and in the presence of a family history, and if there are syndromic features, because pheochromocytoma usually um, can be accompanied by uh, a, a, a syndrome. So what's the best test to be done to uh, detect a few chromocytoma or a paraganglioma? That is by measuring plasma-free uh, metanephrine or urinary fractionated metanephrines. Uh, 
so we'll take, uh, I'll present a case of a child with a few chromocytoma. She was a 15 year old girl with non pulsatile frontal headaches, nine months before hospital admission. This was associated with palpitations. On admission, her blood pressure was 160 over 123 millimeters mercury. On follow up, she developed new visual symptoms, blurred vision of the left eye, fundoscopy and angiography revealed small venous occlusions with sparing of the macula. She went on to develop bilateral cloud division, most pronounced in the left eye with macular detachment and superficial peripapillary hemorrhages. That is, the blood pressure was so high that it caused end organ damage. Uh, on examination, the, bo uh, the body mass index was 17.5 kilograms per meter squared. That is, she was slim and she was not obese. There were no skin lesions suggestive of a syndromic uh, disease. Blood pressure was 187 over 139 millimeters mercury. The heart rate was rapid, 130 beats per minute. There were no murmurs and, uh, uh, at, and it was rhythmic. Uh, abdominal examination showed no uh, masses or murmurs, and there was edema. So we, she was started on labitrol infusion until the blood pressure was controlled, and this resulted in clinical improvement and regression of the headaches and the visual symptoms. The recurrent episodes of severe hypertension with end organ damage, the tachycardia and sweating prior, prioritized the possibility of a pheochromocytoma. And of course, uh, the metanephrines and the catecholamines levels were done. And the, on CT, she had an adrenal mass uh, in, uh, above the left kidney. And this is uh, another child with bilateral uh, suprarenal masses uh, uh, as a result of a pheochromocytoma. It can be a multifocal, bilateral, unilateral, or whatever. Uh, we have uh, pheochromocytomas in children uh, are more likely uh, to be uh, extra adrenal and has a greater chance of a familial genetic syndrome. And the syndromes associated with uh, pheochromocytoma are uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, the von Hippel Lindo syndrome, neurofibromatosis type 1, and paragangliomas type 1 and 4. And we have to bear in mind that in children, hypertension is usually sustained rather than paroxysmal. Uh, this, uh, now we come to the uh, mineralocorticoid role in hypertension. This can result from excessive secretion of mineralocorticoids or excessive action on the mineralocorticoid receptor. So when do we consider primary aldosteronism? If the systolic blood pressure is sustained above 150 millimeters mercury and the diastolic above 90 millimeters mercury, if the hypertension is resistant to three conventional antihypertensive drugs, including a diuretic, if the blood pressure is controlled with four or more antihypertensive drugs, hypertension with spontaneous or diuretic induced hypokalemia, hypertension and adrenal incidentaloma, again, if we discover an adrenal mass on uh, radiography, and if there is a family history of early onset hypertension or cerebrovascular accident at a young age below 40 years of o uh, old, case detection for all hypertensive first degree relatives of patients with primary aldosteronism, because some types of primary aldosteronism are familial. So what is the best test to be done to detect uh, primary aldosteronism is by doing the aldosterone renin ratio. Plasma aldosterone in this case will be elevated and the renin activity will be suppressed and this should trigger confirmatory testing. This is the case of a 10 year old girl who presented to uh, the ER with headache, abdominal pain, dizziness and muscular weakness. Muscular weakness is very important in this case because it can point to hypokalemia. Initial evaluation showed a slim girl again with severe hypertension. The blood pressure was 210 over 160 millimeters mercury. The pulse was 110 beats per minute. She had a family history of hypertension. And the labs showed hypokalemia. Serum sodium was normal and creatinine was normal. ECG and echocardiogram showed left ventricular hypertrophy. So that hypertension was severe and sustained. Uh, MR uh, abdominal angiography revealed no adrenal masses and no uh, arterial renal stenosis.
So because of the severe hypertension and the first thing that comes to mind is a few chromocytoma. So at 24 uh, four hours, urinary catecholamines were normal. Thyroid functions and cortisol values were normal. Uh, then we proceeded to do the aldosterone level, which was elevated, and renin was suppressed. And the plasma aldosterone, uh, the plasma aldosterone to renin ratio was 51, which normally it's below 20. Because of uh, the high plasma aldosterone and suppressed renin and the familial occurrence of uh, hypertension and because of the absence of adrenal mass on radiography, a dexamethasone suppression test was done to exclude a glucocorticoid suppressible hyperaldosteronism and it, was, uh, it failed to suppress the aldosterone level. So uh, they proceeded to do an adrenal scintigraphy under dexamethasone suppression which was consistent with bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. And this shows the increased uptake uh, in the, uh, ad both adrenal glands. Uh, adrenal hyperplasia is a rare cause of primary aldosteronism. So uh, I have mentioned the, the glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. Uh, it should be considered in hypertensive individuals who are uh, have a biochemical uh, profile similar to primary aldosteronism. Uh, and uh, it should be considered when primary aldosteronism is diagnosed without a demonstrable tumor. The patients are young, especially children, because it is a genetic condition uh, and have suppressed the plasma renin activity. They have a family history of cerebral hemorrhage because in this condition, it's usually associated with cerebral aneurysms and with high blood pressure it can cause cerebral hemorrhage especially in if it occurs in individuals uh, before the age of 30 years have refractory hypertension again they are hypertensive on three classes of agents including a diuretic and are members of a known GRA kindred and what is the cause of uh, the aldosterone uh, remedi uh, the glucocorticoid remediable hyperaldosteronism because the gene for the aldosterone synthase is adjacent to the gene for 11 beta hydroxylase, and if unequal crossing over occurs during meiosis, will end with a chimeric gene where the promoter of the 11 hydroxylase uh, will be adjacent <coughs> to the coding region of <coughs> excuse me <coughs> aldosterone synthase, and accordingly the production of aldosterone synthase will be under the influence of ACTH. ACTH produces cortisol in far bigger amounts than uh, aldosterone is produced under the influence of the angiotensin uh, renin uh, system. So the amount of aldosterone produced under the influence of ACTH will be very high. The inheritance pattern in this condition is autosomal uh, dominant and hypertension develops in uh, childhood or even in infancy and treatment of course by suppressing ACTH with a gluco uh, corticoid or by blocking the mineralocorticoid receptor. The dose of uh, glucocorticoids in adults, uh, the dexamethasone can be given in uh, the dose of 0.125 to 0.24 milligrams daily or prednisolone 2.5 to 5 milligrams daily. Uh, blocking the aldosterone, uh, the mineralocorticoid receptor is an alternative. It can be uh, given either alone or, or, or in combination with uh, low dose glucocorticoids. And antagonists of the epithelial sodium channel, amyloride and triamtrine, can also uh, be used as adjunctive uh, therapy. Now to uh, we come to causes of hypertension uh, with suppressed aldosterone and renin. In the previous uh, slides, we mentioned uh, high aldosterone suppressed renin. Here, we, when we do the profile, we find that both are suppressed. They can be caused by distal nephron disorders. Uh, uh, the, uh, the first uh, syndrome is Liddell syndrome, which is autosomal dominant. It is caused by mutation in the beta or gamma subunit of the amyloride sensitive epithelial sodium channel. When they are mutated, this will result in decreased degradation of the channel with increased sodium reabsorption and accordingly will cause suppressed aldosterone and renin. The presentation is very similar to primary aldosteronism. However, uh, the profile is different. And we can see here that the 
aldosterone will bind to the mineral corticoid receptor, will be translocated to the nucleus where it will uh, stimulate the synthesis of the epithelial sodium channel. Now, if the, uh, if the epithelial sodium channel is uh, defective, that is, it is not liable to be degraded at the usual rate, it will result in excessive sodium reabsorption independent of aldosterone action and accordingly will cause suppression of aldosterone and renin and the treatment is with uh, agents that block the epithelial sodium channel action that is amyloride or triamtrine. The second syndrome is Gordon syndrome. Uh, in Gordon syndrome there is mutation in the WINC uh, one or four uh, genes. They will affect three channels in the distal nephron. The first is the sodium chloride co-transporter. It will increase the activity of the sodium chloride co-transporter and accordingly they there will be increased uh, sodium reabsorption and hypertension will decrease the activity of the renal outer medullary potassium channel resulting in decreased potassium excretion and hypo hyperkalemia. The hyperkalemia will stimulate aldosterone production although the sodium is high but the hyperkalemia will stimulate the synthesis of aldosterone and accordingly the level of aldosterone in this syndrome will be either normal or slightly increased and it will dec uh, um, decrease the activity of the calcium channel resulting in increased calcium excretion with nephrocalcinosis and if the excretion of uh, calcium is excessive it will cause osteoporosis and the treatment is with thiazide diuretics because they block the sodium chloride uh, co-transporter. Now we come to other, another cause of depressed uh, aldosterone and renin, which is the excessive production of the precursors of aldosterone, that is the oxycorticosterone. Uh, <coughs> And when to consider excessive uh, secretion of the oxycorticosterone is uh, when we are presented with a child with congenital adrenal hyperplasia resulting from 11 beta or 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. If there is a doxy, uh, deoxycorticosterone producing tumor and with primary cortisol resistance. In 11 hydroxylase deficiency, of course, the first manifestation will not be hypertension, but will, uh, with a girl who has ambiguous genitalia or a genetic male who has uh, pseudo precocious puberty. In 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency, usually the presentation is at uh, the time of puberty with um, failure to enter puberty or a primary amenorrhea. The oxycorticosterone producing tumors are usually large and malignant, however, there are case reports of benign uh, adenomas producing deoxycorticosterone. In primary cortisol resistance, the glucocorticoid receptor is defective. So uh, there is failure of negative feedback inhibition of both the pituitary and the hypothalamus. And ACTH is produced in excessive amounts, resulting in excessive production of cortisol. However, we'll, we, ha we'll we will have no manifestations of Cushing syndrome because the glucocorticoid receptor is defective. The excessive production of androgens will result in ambiguous genitalia, virilization, hirsutism, and so on. And the excessive production of the precursors of aldosterone. Aldosterone is produced under the influence of the renin angiotensin system. The precursors can be influenced by ACTH, will have excessive amounts of deoxycorticosterone resulting in hypertension. And of course, suppressed aldosterone and renin. Another cause of suppressed aldosterone and renin are, uh, is the apparent mineralocorticoid excess syndrome, where we find uh, usually cortisol produced in the body is degraded in the kidney to cortisone by the 11-beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase type 2 enzyme. Uh, if this de enzyme is defective, then we'll have excessive amounts of cortisol, and this condition is autosomal recessive. Cortisol in the kidney uh, is more, has more affinity to the mineralocorticoid receptor than uh, aldosterone. However, it is rapidly, rapidly degraded by the 11 hydroxylase enzyme, uh, the uh, steroid dehydrogenase enzyme, so it will not act on the mineralocorticoid receptor. And with absence of this enzymatic activity, then the amount of cortisol which is produced in bigger amount than aldosterone will override aldosterone and will uh, 
stimulate the mineralocorticoid receptor, resulting in hypertension and suppressed aldosterone and renin. And according to the enzymatic uh, loss of enzymatic activity, we'll have uh, severe hypertension in infancy with very low enzymatic activity to milder degrees of hypertension in adulthood. This is the case of an 11-month-old boy who was born with normal birth weight to healthy consanguineous parents who presented with severe dehydration, polyuria, polydipsia, and hypercalciuria. Renal ultrasound revealed the presence of nephrocalcinosis. He was severely hypertensive and hypokalemic and had moderate left ventricular hypertrophy. The metabolic studies showed low plasma aldosterone and renin, suppressed aldosterone and renin, normal deoxycorticosterone, and the metabolites that are suggestive of glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. The, the very striking features in this case is the presence of uh, the nephrocalcinosis and the polyuria and polydipsia and the hypercalciuria. It was found that he had increased urinary ratio of cortisol to cortisone metabolites in the urine, which was confirmatory for apparent mineralocorticoid excess. Um, the absence of the enzymatic activity of 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase gene and the hypokalemia uh, were found to result in excessive uh, calcium excretion by the kidneys with hypercalciuria and nephrocalcinosis. Uh, so we have two uh, causes of uh, hypertension that are associated with nephrocalcinosis, that is the apparent mineralocorticoid excess syndrome and Gordon syndrome. Salt restriction is usually sufficient to normalize blood pressure in this condition. Uh, this is again the case of a girl who was born at 36 weeks gestation with low birth weight. Systemic arterial, arterial hypertension was first noted at the age of four months. Echocardiography showed left ventricular hypertrophy and the kidneys were normal on ultrasound. There was no hypokalemia or metabolic alkalosis, but renin al and aldosterone were low. In this case, we don't have nephrocalcinosis, we don't have hypokalemia. Her urinary uh, cortisol to cortisone metabolites uh, were typical of uh, apparent mineralocorticoid excess syndrome. Uh, and hypertension, which was not controlled by the use of nifedipine, was co corrected with uh, hydrochlorothiazide. And at the age of five years, the blood pressure remains normal with dietary salt restriction and hydrochlorothiazide. So we don't have to have the full pattern that is with polyuria, polydipsia, nephrocalcinosis, and hypokalemia. Uh, it can present with varying uh, grades. Uh, the decreased activity of uh, the hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase uh, gene uh, enzyme type 2 may be hereditary or it may be secondary to pharmacological inhibition by glycerizic acid, which is the active principle of licorice. Also, when ACTH is produced in excessive amounts, as in case of ectopic ACTH syndrome, the amount of cortisol will override uh, override the activity of the 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase gene and it will uh, result in stimulation of the mineralocorticoid receptor in hypertension. Now uh, the last cause of uh, adrenal hypertension is glucocorticoid excess which is uh, Cushing syndrome. Uh, hypertension in this case occurs in 80% of cases, not 100% of cases, and it results from the mineralocorticoid activity of cortisol. If cortisol production is very uh, large, then it will uh, stimulate the mineralocorticoid receptor. Also, the excessive cortisol produced will result in activation of the renin angiotensin system, enhance the uh, cardiovascular activity to vasoconstrictors and increase the beta-adrenergic receptor sensitivity to catecholamines. This is an algorithm that helps us to uh, tackle the hereditary causes of uh, ad uh, adrenal hypertension. First of all, there is early onset hypertension, so we do the renin level. The first thing to do is the renin level. If the uh, renin level is high, 
then this excludes irritable etiology of hypertension. If it's low, then we measure the aldosterone level. If the aldosterone level is high, then we see if the, uh, the hypertension is responsi responsive to blockage of the mineralocorticoid, uh, sorry, uh, we'll uh, see if it's responsive to uh, glucocorticoids. If it's responsive to glucocorticoids, we are dealing with glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. If not, then it is a, a familial cause of primary hyperaldosteronism. Now, if the aldosterone level is normal, then we see if uh, it is responsive to mineralocorticoid receptor blockage. If not, then we are dealing with Gordon syndrome. If we remember in Gordon syndrome, the, uh, st uh, the excessive activity of the sodium chloride co-transporter will result in sodium, uh, excessive uh, sodium reabsorption and hypertension, uh, and the decreased activity of the renal outer medullary potassium channel will result in excessive, uh, uh, in decreased excretion of potassium causing hyperkalemia, and hyperkalemia will uh, stimulate aldosterone synthesis. So if the aldosterone level is normal, then we have to think of Gordon syndrome, especially if in the presence of nephrocalcinosis. Now, uh, we, if the aldosterone level is low, then we see if it responsive to blockage of the mineralocorticoid receptor. Usually we block the mineralocorticoid receptor with spironolactone. If uh, it is responsive to mineralocorticoid the receptor blockage, then we measure the ratio of the oxycorticosterone uh, uh, or the oxycortisol uh, ratio to uh, cortisol level. If it's high, then we are dealing with a case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, because in congenital adrenal hyperplasia, cortisol uh, production is decreased wi while the intermediates are increased. If the ratio is low, then we are dealing with uh, apparent mineralocorticoid uh, excess, because in this case, the uh, inhibition of the 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase gene will result in excessive uh, retention of cortisol in the body. Now, if this, it's not responsive to uh, uh, blockage of the mineralocorticoid receptor, then we are dealing with Liddell syndrome, because hypertension in Liddell syndrome results from the constitutive activity of the epithelial sodium uh, channel, so it is not responsive to the blockage of mineralocorticoid receptor. I'll present some cases to demonstrate uh, these uh, etiologies. Uh, first, an 18-year-old male a student who had a four-year history of hypertension but had never been treated. He presented with idiopathic paresis of the facial nerve during an episode of excessive blood pressure elevation. No stroke was detected by MRI and antihypertensive treatment with three classes of antihypertensives was initiated without any blood pressure lowering effect. So we have uh, resistant hypertension, so we are thinking of uh, uh, probably an adrenal uh, etiology. Uh, he had an average 24-hour uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring of twen uh, 200 over 160 millimeters mercury, and the heart rate was uh, 60 beats per minute, so it wasn't rapid, just hypertension. So we, we will not think much of a uh, fake chromocytoma. The renin was suppressed, the plasma aldosterone concentration was high, uh, and the ratio was very high. The aldosterone renin ratio was very high. Sodium was 143 millimoles per liter, potassium 3.5, so it's low normal. Renal parameters were normal, and MRI showed normal adrenals. So he has a high aldosterone uh, renin ratio that goes with primary aldosteronism. However, there was no message on uh, MRI of the adrenals. And his um, pedigree shows that his paternal grandfather died from myocardial infarction at the age of 67 years. His father is hypertensive and his brother is hypertensive. So we have a familial condition. So we can think of primary aldosteronism or glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. The first uh, choice will be glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism because of the family, strong family history and the absence of an adrenal miss. Uh, 
The second case is a boy was born with normal birth weight to unrelated parents. At age 13, he was investigated for severe hypertension, morning headaches, limb paresthesia, cramps, palpitations, and tetanic convulsions. His father and paternal grandfather also had hypertension. His kidneys appeared normal on ultrasonography, whereas cardiac echocardiography showed left ventricular hypertrophy. So we are dealing with a familial cause of hypertension. Uh, the biochemical investigations showed low to normal uh, serum potassium without metabolic alkalosis and low plasma renin, low aldosterone and normal deoxycorticosterone and the metabolites that are characteristic of uh, glucocorticoid remediable hyperaldosteronism. Uh, so uh, we are left with apparent mineralocorticoid excess. We have low plasma renin, low aldosterone, and uh, the ratio of high urinary, uh, uh, high urinary ratio of cortisol to cortisone metabolites was confirmatory. The third case, a 13-year-old girl was admitted for malignant hypertension associated with a 9 kilogram weight loss. For two months, she had experienced easy fatigability and episodic headache accompanied by dizziness and blurred vision. Blood pressure was 240 over 160 millimeters mercury. The family history was positive again. Physical examination revealed the pulse of 84 beats per minute and blood pressure of 210 over 140 millimeters mercury. So she had episodic symptoms and weight loss. Fundoscopic examination showed grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy. Her extremities were cold and clammy with poor perfusion. Initial blood pressure management, which included diazoxide, hydralazine, and captopril, was not adequate until an alpha blocker was added. Diagnostic study results included a negative hypertensive intravenous pyelography, normal X-ray of the chest, and ECG showed left ventricular hypertrophy. So, of course, we are left, the, 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 the um, history and the examination point to catecholamine excess, and the 24-hour urinary vinyl mandelic acid was high, the plasma norepinephrine and epinephrine were high, and abdominal CT showed a left adrenal mass, and an MIBG scan showed increased activity in the region of the left adrenal with questionable activity in the right adrenal gland. And in this uh, CT uh, shows um, a three centimeter uh, mass in uh, the lower pole of the left adrenal. Now some questions, you have to try to answer them. A 16 year old girl presents with headache and blood pressure of 185 over 100 millimeters mercury. She is on no medications. Her mother and 25 year old brother have hypertension. The metabolic panel shows a sodium of 142, chloride 115, potassium 5.6, carbon dioxide 17. The treatment most likely to control her hypertension is calcium channel blocker, spironolactone, hydrochlorothiazide, amyloride, or furosemide. Now what is very characteristic in the metabolic panel is the high potassium. And we know only one cause of hypertension that is uh, associated with uh, hyperkalemia, and that is the Gordon syndrome, which is caused by excessive activity of the sodium chloride co-transporter that is responsive to hydrochlorothiazide. So the answer is three. A three-year-old boy is evaluated for hypertension. He has a seven-year-old brother with hypertension whose disease is poorly controlled with the combination of enalopril and nifedipine. The patient has normal electrolytes, plasma renin activity of 0.5 that is suppressed, plasma aldosterone is high. So he has high aldosterone, suppressed renin, and a positive family history. So the most likely diagnosis is Liddell syndrome, Gordon syndrome, renal artery stenosis, glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism, or familial aldosteronism type 2. Of course, we can consider both four and five. A two-year-old boy is referred for failure to thrive. His blood pressure is 145 over 
95 millimeters mercury. Laboratory evaluation shows sodium 139, potassium 3, so there is hypokalemia. Chloride 90, carbon dioxide 35, plasma renin activity is suppressed. Renal ultrasound shows bilateral nephrocalcinosis. So the potassium is low, there is nephrocalcinosis, and as we mentioned before, there are two causes of hypertension associated with nephrocalcinosis. So what is the most appropriate initial drug to treat hypertension? Is it analopril, spironolactone, hydrochlorothiazide, or furosemide? Uh, in this case, we'll think of uh, mineralocorticoid excess syndrome, and so the answer will be spironolactone. Uh, inherited hypertension can be ruled out in hypertensive 17-year-old if he was normotensive at the age of 12, his maximum blood pressure does not exceed 140 over 85, his plasma renin activity is low, his plasma renin activity is normal, his plasma aldosterone concentration is normal. So how can we uh, over... Uh, how can we rule out a heritable cause of hypertension? As we mentioned in the algorithm, if the plasma renin activity is normal. Uh, which of the following treatments is not effective? Hydrochlorothiazide for Gordon syndrome, amyloride for Liddell syndrome, spironolactone for apparent mineralocorticoid excess, amyloride for apparent mineralocorticoid excess, or spironolactone for Liddell uh, syndrome. Hydrochlorothiazide for Gordon syndrome is okay because the, it's caused by uh, excessive activity of the sodium chloride co-transporter, which is responsive to thiazide diuretics. Amyloride for Liddell syndrome is okay because it's caused by excessive activity of the epithelial sodium channel, which is blocked by amyloride. Spironolactone for apparent mineralocorticoid excess again is okay because cortisol acts on the mineralocorticoid receptor, and if we block it, we can cure the hypertension. Amyloride for apparent mineralocorticoid excess is okay because we block the channel that is uh, uh, the, the production of which is stimulated by uh, binding uh, of aldosterone to the mineralocorticoid receptor. However, if we give spironolactone for Liddell syndrome, it will not be effective because the activity of the sodium, uh, we, we didn't uh, stop the activity of the epithelial uh, sodium channel, and so the answer will be five. And thank you.